Microsoft got its start by creating a basic interpreter for this Altair 8800 computer. And back in March of 1975, Paul Allen flew to Albuquerque, New Mexico to demonstrate that basic to Ed Roberts, the president of METS, the company that manufactured and sold the Altair 8800 computer. Now, the demonstration went very well, and Ed Roberts agreed to distribute and sell basic right along with the entire Altair 8800 product line. Now, of course, this was a major milestone for Microsoft, but it was also very important for the Altair product line. And that's because prior to this point, the Altair computer was really just a hobbyist curiosity, a box of electronics looking for something practical or useful it could do. But now suddenly, with a reasonable basic interpreter running on it and just connecting the teletype, this Altair was a real computer. People under, could understand it now. And it had a purposeful use that was just a fraction the cost of any computer prior to this. And Ed Roberts saw this, and so his uh, advertising campaign immediately switched to focusing on Altair uh, being available, excuse me, on BASIC being available for that Altair computer. And here we see in the very first issue of Computer Notes, this is a monthly newsletter or bi-monthly newsletter published by MITS about the Altair. The headline is Altair BASIC Up and Running. And at the trade shows and the computer conferences, and even on their Mitsmobile, a van that traveled the country demonstrating their equipment, running BASIC was one of the primary displays that they uh, focused on in their demonstrations because it, it made sense to people and made people realize it was a real computer. Now, this version of BASIC, this first version, was good enough for demos, but it wasn't really necessary, it wasn't necessarily ready for prime time, ready for distribution to the end customers. So Bill Gates and company immediately went to work creating version two of BASIC that was ready for distribution to the end customer. Uh, that happened end of, July, end of June, early July of, of 1975. And so version two of BASIC actually represents the first version of Altair BASIC that began shipping to the end customer and that was actually sales for uh, early Microsoft. Um, but they did not sit around and wait uh, Bill Gates and company immediately went to work creating version 3 of BASIC. Primary goal of version 3 was to speed up the floating point routines. And here in August of 1975, in a question and answer section in the uh, Computer Notes um, newsletter back in August, we hear, see here Paul Allen answering some questions about software. And it was talking about, do you know how fast the improved floating point routines are for version three? And he said, yeah, they'll be about twice as fast as version two. And then also mentions that it not only will be faster, but it'll also be a bit shorter, about 100 bytes shorter. So here we see the first promise made by um, Microsoft regarding an upcoming software release. So I thought it'd be interesting to test version two compared to version three and see if it really is twice as fast. Now this is a little bit ambiguous. The question was how fast, how much better are the floating point routines? And then he says Altair Basic will be about twice as fast. But I think what he's really saying is the floating point routines will be twice as fast because there's a lot of other variables that aren't part of floating point, of course. However, floating point was the only data type used in these early versions of Basic. Um, therefore, even loop counters and array indexes all started as floating points. So anything you did to improve floating point was going to improve general program flow as well as the obvious floating point mathematical calculations. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, I'll set up a couple of computers and we'll run this comparison and see if this was marketing hype or if it was real. To compare these two versions of BASIC, I have two Altair 8800 computers configured identically as far as performance is concerned. Uh, they're both running the Altair 8800 CPU board at 2 megahertz. They both have the same amount of RAM, 0 weight state, static RAM. Now over here on the computer on the left, I have version 2 of BASIC installed and running. We can see that here. And if you look closely, you can see that it's got 57,255 bytes free. Here you see we're running version 2. Over here, we've got uh, version 3 running. And you can see we've got 57,413 bytes free. So it's got about 160 bytes more um, available than version two. So the first promise that it's the same size or a little bit smaller actually is true. That worked, so they lived up to that promise. Next thing we're gonna do then is go ahead and load a program to do a quick 
test to see how the speed compares on these. I'm going to run a little primes number calculating program from um, Interface Age magazine. It's a very simple little program. So let me do a video cut and get that installed and we'll take it from there. I have the program loaded into both computers, version 2 and version 3 of BASIC. Over on the left, I'll use that iPad as a stopwatch. And we'll zoom in here a little bit and we can see the program. This is uh, taken from Interface Age magazine. There's nothing special about it. It computes primes between uh, 0 and 200, prints them out as it does it. And it's just to compare the two computers. It doesn't really matter how efficient the algorithm is. All right, so I want to type run on both of these machines. Type run over here. And then I will try to hit return on both of these and then hit the start button as soon as I can. So one, two, three, go. All right, so right off the bat, you can see over on the right, which is version 3, that it's getting ahead already. It's up into the 40s, 50s, and we're still back in the 30s over here on the version 2. So we're going to go ahead and let this run. It takes a little while. I'll do a video cut and come back here as it's nearing 200. All right, we're getting close to finishing over here on the right. We're up in the 180s, 190. I'm going to do a lap time, split time over here as soon as it finishes. Boom, done. All right, so that was at a one minute, 14 seconds. And we can still see we're down at 131. I'll have to zoom in to see the split time I did right there. That's the 114. So we'll go ahead and watch this finish. Uh, looks like we've got a ways to go, so I'll do another video cut and come back when it's closer. All right, this is getting closer now. We're up to 180, and I'll be ready to hit stop over here. All right, so if you look closely down here, I don't know if you can see this. Um, I wonder if I can zoom in a bit for you. So basic version 3 finished in a minute 14. Basic version 2 took 2 minutes and 21 seconds. So almost twice as fast. Not quite, but almost twice as fast. So based on this test, I would say that uh, Paul Allen and his promise in the... Um, Computer Notes magazine was accurate and looks like Microsoft really did keep up with their very first promise. The size is smaller, like they said, and the speed is roughly two to one. Now, this is just one program, and of course, the speed is going to be relative to what exactly you're running. So I thought it'd be interesting to use uh, another benchmark that was published in Byte magazine back in 1880, <laughs> 1881, I'm really going back, 1981, uh, that was used primarily for the purpose of comparing different versions of compilers and languages to see how they performed on the same machine. It wasn't really meant to compare different machines. It was meant to compare different languages on a given machine. And so that would be a good benchmark to run on that. So I'm going to do a video cut and pull that in next. This is again in Byte Magazine from 1981. It's a variation on the sieve of, I can never say this, the sieve of Eratosthenes, um, and it does a good job of exercising memory access, control, looping, that kind of thing. doesn't do much math other than some simple math and all the stuff that are required to do all the program branching and uh, indexing into arrays, that kind of thing. And the point was he didn't, the author of this article, didn't want to weigh heavily hardware multipliers or dividers or whether or not the compiler actually took advantage of that feature or not. He wanted to know how good the code it generated was. So let's take a look at that next. All right, same setup as before, except now instead of running that interface age prime numbers program, we're going to run the um, byte benchmark, which again is calculating the number of prime numbers between 0 and 16,384, and it's doing it using a variation of the sieve of Eratosthenes. Um, now, normally this test would be run 10 times. That's this where it prints how many iterations. But BASIC was so slow and interpreters were so slow back then that they were typically just run with one iteration because it was very easy to time it. The faster um, compilers and machines, uh, in order to use a stopwatch reliably, you needed to time it through more loops. But yeah, BASIC was, it was not unusual to do BASIC interpreters with just one time through. All right, so let me type run here and over on the version 3 computer 
And I'll start these at the same time and then start the stopwatch. All right, now, unlike the other program, this program gives absolutely no feedback whatsoever as it runs. So I'm just going to have to do a uh, video cut and we'll come back here as I know it's getting near completion points and, and see what pops up and get the times at that instant. All right, we've been running about five and a half minutes now and the version three should be finishing up pretty soon here. So I'm going to go let you watch this screen and I am going to get over here at the stopwatch and get ready to hit the split time button so we can record that. Hopefully it's any time soon. I haven't made you wait too, too long. There we go. All right, so it took about six minutes for version three to finish the byte sieve. Um, if you zoom in here, you can see where I've got the, the lap time recorded right there. That's the time I hit the button. Now, interestingly, um, version 3.2, which came out very shortly after version three, sped up array access. So this particular benchmark does about a minute better for version 3.2 down in five, uh, five minute range instead of the six minute range. Not because of the floating point improvement, but because they improved array access in version three. Um, but anyway, so back here, we still got a ways to go here on version two. Uh, we definitely have seen that version three is faster no matter what. It was almost twice as fast on that first benchmark. And we'll see what it is on this Civ benchmark uh, when we come back from this video cut. All right, we're getting closer to when this should be finishing. As you can see, we haven't finished here on version two yet. We're waiting for it to pop up and tell us how many primes there are. By the way, the answer is 1899. That's what it should get. So I'm going to get ready to stop this whenever uh, this finishes up. Now the other one was at six minutes. This one's going to be in the nine minute something range. So we don't see a two to one. Okay, there's done. All right, so let's zoom in and you can see we got the 1899 primes like we want. And then we look at the split time here is from version three. It's at six minutes. Here we are at nine minutes and 50 seconds. So that's not twice as fast. It's about uh, 63, 64% faster, which is still a big improvement, but not twice as fast. But then again, as I showed you earlier, the wording in the question and answer was slightly ambiguous. I think what they were saying was the floating point routines were twice as fast not basic overall. Plus there's so many variables, um, but definitely um, it is much faster and the memory size change is correct. Um, I, I would say they met their promise. The floating point routines are twice as fast. And since the floating point was the only data type used, it, it speeds up most everything you're doing. Um, so anyway, promise kept, Microsoft uh, took care of that. Now on a side note, I thought it'd be interesting to see how this byte uh, benchmark the byte sieve worked with a compiled version of basic um, so i'm going to do a video cut and show that real quick just a couple of years after the basics we've been looking at uh, microsoft created a version of altair basic that ran under cpm because cpm was really taken off and they called this m basic and later on it was called basic 80. and at this time they also created a compiled version of basic that for the most part was backward compatible with anything you wrote at mBasic, maybe just a few minor changes. Anyway, I took that exact same code for the byte sieve and made it run here under uh, compiled basic. So let's see how much faster a compiled version is. So that's the name of the program. I'm just running it from the command prompt on CPM. Now, all this time you're seeing, this is just the amount of time it takes to load the program and to load the basic runtime library. So to eliminate that from our test, I've got a prompt here that we have to hit return on before it begins running. So I'm going to do that and hit start at the same time and let this run. Now, uh, this still takes quite a bit of time to run, so I'm going to do a video cut and we'll come back when it's almost ready. All right, so this should be finishing up here pretty soon. Now this, uh, again, is the exact same routine as we saw before. Uh, running with floating point just like the original one did. So this is a very apples to apples comparison between the compiled version and the interpreted version. Let's be watching for it to pop up here. 
All right, done. So about a minute and 40 seconds. So uh, yes, much faster compared to six minutes. So it's about four times faster than version three was um, interpreted. Again, like I mentioned, version 3.2 was down to about five minutes. So um, it's still at least, what, three, three and a half times faster than that as well. Um, kind of disappointing though, in my opinion, I would have thought it had been even faster than that being compiled, but I've noticed that in a number of things. The compiled version is always better, but not as much as you might think. Um, so for example, I thought it'd be fun to go ahead and see how I would do an assembly. So um, I wrote it in assembly language and, um, you know, did some good assembly language optimization, but I did not change the algorithm at all. It does everything in the algorithm. There's no shortcuts by any means. So let's reset that. And this runs at 2000. So when I hit return, we'll do this. Now this is actually doing the 10 iterations like the original, not just the one. Okay, so it finished in seven and a half seconds, 7.6 seconds, and it did it 10 times, not once. So one iteration was 0.75 seconds, 0.76 seconds. So obviously this is just dramatically faster. It's almost four, uh, what, almost 500, 475 times faster than the six minutes. So yeah, you, you can't beat assembly language and then optimizing for the particular processor you're on as well. Um, but anyway, lots of fun. Um, but Microsoft lived up to its first promise and um, it was a fun little thing to find this very, very early version of BASIC. Version 2 is the first BASICs actually shipped by Microsoft and the first paychecks that Microsoft started collecting. And um, well, hopefully some other fun little artifacts will show up and I can make another video about those.